Hello and welcome to Aston Originals. Today we are talking about Indian partition and what's going on at Aston University about it. I'm joined by Dr. Brian Sudlow. Brian, you've been on the channel many, many times, possibly more than I have, um, but for any new viewers and listeners out there, just introduce yourself for us. Thanks, Sam. Um, so I'm uh, Dr. Brian Sudlow. I'm from the history section of uh, the Department of Politics, History and International Relations. Uh, and I work on uh, history of, of technology and uh, also on global history as well. Uh, there's an exhibition coming up uh, as part of the partition of India. It's going to be at Birmingham, Birmingham New Street. I've seen some of the artwork and some of the literature around it so far. I managed to get myself a sneak peek. Um, but what is it? So um, this exhibition is um, uh, is going to be held over three weeks um, between the 6th and, and 27th of, of September. Uh, we'll have the opening ceremony at uh, 6 p.m. on the, the 6th of September, just a, a, a little ceremony that evening. And the exhibition marks uh, the 75th anniversary of the partition of India. Um, it's the it's the ending of, of, of the old British India, the, the Raj. And uh, with the partition, uh, India is divided into uh, Pakistan um, in the north, well, Pakistan and, and, and East Pakistan, which later becomes Bangladesh, and, uh, and then India uh, in, the, in the southern part of the subcontinent. Uh, so um, this is actually a, a, a collaboration between um, uh, colleagues in the history department uh, here at Aston and uh, Desi Blitz, the uh, the Southeast Asian cultural uh, magazine, online cultural magazine, um, and um, uh, so we're, we've 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 come together, and and Desi Blitz have shared some interviews uh, with survivors of uh, of partition, um, actually interviews collected from uh, from people who lived in the West Midlands after um, uh, in or moved to the West Midlands after partition happened. Um, and uh, those testimonies will be front and center really of, uh, of, the, of the whole exhibition. And why Birmingham New Street? Well, New Street, Birmingham New Street um, uh, has a special connection for us really with, uh, with the whole story behind partition. Um, you know, first of all, partition is um you know it's it, it's an event with global significance um it's the it's the the single largest migratory event in history it's around 14 million people within the space of a few months uh who mo move um muslims moving out of india and into pakistan and sikhs and hindus moving out of what is now pakistan uh down into down into india um, and uh, so this is an event, as I say, with a global significance. And, um, you know, be because of that significance, it's an event that comes to shape the history of Birmingham. And uh, many of the communities uh, who, who leave uh, India at this time either come directly to the West Midlands or they, they, they come um, via Africa, often via, via Kenya. Um, and... Uh, and of course, those communities and populations um, towards the end of the 20th century reshape, uh, reshape Birmingham itself and, and, and change, change the face of Birmingham entirely. So um, Birmingham New Street, um, for, for that reason, first of all. Uh, and then secondly, also because of the trains, because the trains are um, uh, very important. Uh, symbol, if you like, or, or, or signal icon for partition, and they're, they're heavily involved uh, in, in in the story of of partition in both the, the the happy side of partition and also in in some of the more tragic elements behind the partition story as well. I mean, they are. Aren't they? I mean, you, you mentioned icon. They are iconic in England, the railways, um, for for many different reasons. Could you tell us what they were like before partition? Sure. Um. You know, before partition, um, the Indian Railway was 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 already quite a quite a spectacular infrastructure. Uh, there were, um, I think, more than forty two thousand miles of uh, of track 
this made the railways in India the uh, the fourth largest railway in the world um, uh, uh, at the, uh, uh, by the middle of the 20th century. Um, so, the, you know, it's, it, it, it was an enormous uh, system. Um, and uh, and, and the, there were some very positive and, and, and good sides to this system, um, but also some, some negative ones as well on, on the positive side. Um, as, it, as in many areas around the world, you know, the railways facilitated all, all, all kinds of positive things. They tended to raise um, the levels of, of, uh, of trade and, and, uh, and income within regions. Of course, this was very important within India, which had uh, you know, many, many poor regions. But generally, economic growth where railways came was, was very positive. Um, and uh, and the railways were, were were seen as a you know as a sign of of, of progress and of uh, a modernity. You know, uh, India uh, at the time doesn't have a, a lot of mechanization, and 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 people could see that mechanization brought um, uh, you know brought uh, uh, advantages in, in in various ways. So. Um, uh, you know, this was this was the positive side, the positive story, if you like, of the of the railways before before partition. On the more negative side, um, the the uh, the railways were uh, well, at least according to uh, to certain observers, the railways also showed some of the deep wounds and and, and deep divisions uh, that 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 were there. Um, in uh, 1916, um, Gandhi. Uh, wrote a, a famous essay about um, about the third class railway carriage, and he saw the the third class railway carriage on the Indian railway system as 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 being um, uh, a horrible, squalid um, sort of place. Um, uh, all sorts of people crammed in. Um, he believed that um, uh, that the railways helped. Um, uh, diseases travel around around India. Disease spread more quickly because of the railways, because people, of course, were were moving about, um, and um, the railways were also used as well by by um, by para paramilitary groups, by police groups, um, and uh, and so there, there's also a a sense in which the railways provide part of the the, the colonial control system uh, as well, and are also used. It has to be said, you know, as uh, um, as, a, as a, the infrastructure for the colonial exploitation of uh, uh, of India. So there you go. It's it's a mixed story, and and uh, um, you know, I think uh, like like so many stories in colonial history, there's a positive side and a negative one. And how were they used during? Because I suppose when you've got to displace 14 million people, a, a rail infrastructure would come in handy. Well, indeed, and and um, you know the 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 story of the railways during partition follows very much um, that um, that that positive and, and negative uh, pattern that I've just talked about uh, with the railways before partition. So you know, on 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 the positive side, yeah, the trains came into uh, came into their own. Um, you know, they were they were well planned. Um, and, uh, and and had good stock. There was something like um, our best data is um, around 670 uh, trains that were used to transport people um, over those uh, three months uh, of, uh, of partition, where, where most of the movement happened. Um, and it's thought as many as as, as two million refugees. Uh, travel um, on, on on the trains during that period, so it's 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 quite a significant number of people uh, who who actually um, uh, are on the trains. Um, now, you know, in in, in some places, the uh, the trains are met by by welcoming committees, um, and uh, you know, bread and bread and foodstuffs are distributed to the to the refugees, and um, you know, in, in that sense, the the um, uh, the trains helped uh, do what partition tried to achieve, which was a, 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 um, you know a, a distribution of the population um, in countries where they would feel comfortable living. But then there's also the negative side of uh, of the trains during partition as well, and uh, there were many many tragic stories. The trains and the railway stations, in fact, um, are. Um, uh, uh, 
hotspots for violence between different uh, communities. Um, there are lots and lots of deaths uh, on the trains, essentially murder squads going around, um, uh, killing people from the different uh, from the different communities. There's also we see the phenomenon of uh, what they call ghost trains, um, where um, all the passengers on a train will be massacred, but the train will still be sent across the border um, as a as a as a as a sign, you know, to um, to people on the other side of the uh, the border of, of of you know the the hatred uh, that was that was born to them. So um, you know, there's there's great tragedy surrounding the trains as well, and um, I think it's it's um, it's important that. Uh, you know the voices, the personal voices uh, that Desi Blitz, for example, have, have managed to record and, and uh, collect, um, uh, are given uh, you know a, a, a platform through this exhibition to talk about these sorts of experiences. There are many positive sides to partition, but also many tragic ones as well. Well, it sounds incredibly interesting. So, uh, Children of the Railway exhibition will be at Birmingham New Street Station from Monday the 5th of September. The grand opening, of course, on Tuesday the 6th. It will be there for three weeks. Do pop down and see it. Also, one of your colleagues, Brian, uh, Dr. Volker Protz, has been extremely busy um, doing um, lots of prep and lots of podcasting by the looks of things. He has a podcast out. Um, it's the latest episode of Society Matters. Um, he is discussing the 75th anniversary of Indian Partition. Also, there is an event on the 25th of August at Cafe Artem, part of Hockley Social Club um, from 5 till 7. Link is in the description for that. Head down to Hockley Social Club and Cafe Artem um, to see Dr. Volker Prot and his talk on that. But otherwise, um, we will say goodbye to Dr. Brian Sudlow. Goodbye, Sam. Nice to speak to you. <laughs> it is a goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>